Hey guys, welcome to Solo React Talk. Tonight I'm going to be reacting to a video requested by Neutral TK. It's called The Chimera Resistance Made on the Tempin Institute YouTube channel. Uh, this is in relation to my reaction to the Chimerian War, uh, also made by the Tempin Institute. And uh, it's connected to it, so it's a continuation. I guess I, I, guess I could say it like that, yeah. Um, with the Chimerian War, we were dealing with <clears throat> um, how the Chimera, uh, you know, first started out their operations of taking over the world. Uh, they started in Russia first, uh, and it grew and expanded itself into Europe and into the rest uh, of the Northern Hemisphere countries. And as soon as they were able to adapt to the climate, uh, in the southern hemisphere it is then when they started to begin their global invasion of the rest of the planet and it was a total and utter defeat uh, in resistance to you know we got to see some few resistance fighters uh, trying to keep some sort of semblance of hope uh, to try and slow down the chimera try to defeat the chimera where they where they can and for some time it looked like it was going to work but the force, the Chimerian force was just overwhelming, technologically superior, uh, numerically superior. Uh, it was just a matter of time, really. Um, and after Resistance 2, planet Earth was teleported into the Chimera home system. Uh, I think that's what it was. And that's where it left off. Now, Neutral TK said that the Chimera video made by the Temple Institute will further explain what happened in Resistance 3. Yes. So in Resistance 3, uh, I'm still not sure whether humanity was able to survive, uh, you know, somehow, some way after the events from Resistance 2, or are we doomed permanently this time? I'm just wondering about that. Um, so yeah, let's start with Chimera. And remember guys, if you want to check out uh, my previous reaction to the Chimerian War, the card is going to be at the top here. Just click on it and you'll be able to access it. If you want to check out the original video as well as uh, the Temple Institute's YouTube channel, the links are in the description below. And guys, I'm sick. You know, I have a sore throat. I'm, you know, sneezing a lot. Um, so forgive me if, uh, you know, I'm a bit loud. Like if I start coughing or sneezing. Just <laughs> forgive me for that. Um, but yeah, let's start. <clears throat> Three, two, one, go. In 1920, a team of Russian geologists embarked on an expedition to one of the most remote regions of Siberia. A tremendous explosion was reputed to have taken place roughly a decade earlier, one that had flattened entire forests for hundreds of miles. Upon reaching the Tunguska River, the expedition's guides would go no further, fearing what they called the Valleymen and speaking of superstitious tales of vengeful gods who slaughtered the surrounding wildlife. Only a scant few traces of the expedition were ever recovered after they disappeared, but even as the Russian Empire retreated into isolationism and ties with the outside world were severed, strange tales started emanating from the reclusive nation. European intelligence services began reporting hundreds of ghost towns, entire cities abandoned, strange weather patterns and mysterious lights seen in the night skies. In 1948, the broadcasts of the 12,000 transmitter stations that constituted the Russian radio network were replaced by a single looping phrase, brotherhood, strength, and fortitude in the face of the angry night. The in the face of the angry night. Oh. And you know they are far more powerful, uh, you know, in cold, sorry, <clears throat> in cold environments. And uh, because of the long winter nights, there must have been really just just going through all the Russian defenses and just causing a lot of havoc and destruction and you know and abducting humans uh, to get converted hmm. 
Theories were rampant as to the cause of the Russian situation and included a biological or chemical disaster, some new type of weapon, or even Russian experiments. It is far more dangerous than all that has been stated. Far more, uh, you know, terrifying, you know, beings from another planet. Yeah. But when the true nature of this threat was revealed and broke through the Russian border fortifications and spread across the world, it was far worse than anyone could have imagined. They are known by many names. In Russia as the Angry Knight, in Italy as the Deathless Plague, yet one other above all, the Chimera. This monstrous alien race are not a single species, but rather a collection of various strains united under a caste-based hive-like mentality. Each strain is the apparent result of a biological weapon known as the Chimeran virus, which mutates and transforms humans and animals alike into new forms of hybridized life. This is accomplished primarily through small, beetle-like parasites known as crawlers, which inject the virus into a victim's body, usually after entering through the nose or mouth. Crawlers are typically deployed into populated areas through the use of spire missiles, which can quickly infect entire cities in only a few hours. Once these parasites have fully merged into the host, the victim will fall into a comatose state, eventually transforming into one of the lower strains of the Chimeran race. To speed up this process or to create more advanced strains, infected bodies are retrieved and then taken to a network of conversion centers. The chimera fabricated here are far more capable variants than those created naturally and are routinely augmented with cybernetic implants. I don't know why, but this will always be a bit funny. <laughs> It'll always be funny, like the way the robot arms are just you know, picking up this Chimeran soldier and then, you know, putting in the stuff. It's just funny. I don't know. Plants, most notably external cooling mechanisms, which help offset the Chimera's dangerously enhanced metabolism. The most common Chimera strains vaguely resemble humans, although regularly include up to three pairs of golden eyes and grayish green skin. Within the Chimera's hierarchy, these species fill the lowest tiers of the worker and warrior castes. The more advanced but less common Chimera strains vary wildly in appearance and often fulfill a very distinct role or have been designed to function within a specific environment. In rare cases, the Chimera have been known to reconstitute thousands or even tens of thousands of human bodies into enormous creatures reaching heights of 300 feet or more. In response to changing conditions or local resistance, certain Chimeran strands may be phased out by newer and more effective variants within a relatively short amount of time. Strains abandoned or cut off from the Chimeran hive mind revert to a bestial state and can become hostile to their former kin. Interesting, interesting. So obsolete Chimeran uh, strands are just let go. They can do whatever they want. They, they're, they're set free, essentially and they even attack their own kind that's quite interesting i thought maybe they would uh you know collect all those chimera that are obsolete and you know put them in some sort of i don't know acid pool or biological pool where all of that organic material can be reprocessed uh, and create new chimera soldiers or something like that yeah but this is interesting the fact that they just let them go and they can do whatever they want hmm. Feral chimera exhibit their own form of hierarchy and seem to disproportionately include the more animalistic strains. The exact relationship between the various species of the chimeran virus remains only partially explained, although generally, lesser strains serve higher ones who, in turn, exert some method of control over them. During their time on Earth, the Chimera have made use of several dedicated leadership strains who use a type of telepathy to extend their influence. In a unique occurrence, a Daedalus. being known as Daedalus assumed sole command of the Chimera, replacing much of the leadership cast that had come before. The now, when, now, when Daedalus replaced much of the leadership cast, how was that process going about? Did he kill them? Or did he absorb them? And, and is that why Daedalus looks that like that? Like this big floating insectoid or octopus kind of creature? You know, I'm just wondering about that. Like how did he usurp the leadership role? 
uh, of the chimera and become you know the, the lead the leader of the hive mind hmm. i'm just wondering about that Chimeran ability to combine artificial and biological systems makes it difficult to distinguish Chimeran life from their highly advanced technology. They make use of a number of machines, ranging from mobile siege platforms to enormous battleships and support vehicles. Like, the Chimera are technologically advanced and biologically advanced, you know. That, that, that is just a deadly combination for any civilization on any planet to deal with, you know. If your enemy was technologically advanced, you know, at least you might have a chance biologically. I don't know how. <laughs> don't ask me about that. You might have a chance. Or if the enemy is biologically advanced, at least probably you'll have technologically, uh, you know, something that can uh, prevent them from spreading and contain them in a particular place and then defeat them over time, you know. But with the Chimera, they have both, uh, you know, gauntlets technology and biology on their side and they're just pummeling humanity on the face every single day yeah it's crazy while these craft are known to include lesser chimeran strains that serve as crew it is entirely possible that some of these machines themselves might possess an advanced intelligence and in a sense be alive perhaps the strangest element of chimeran technology are the immense towers which have been uncovered across the world while the design of these monolithic structures is clearly alien in origin, they are excavated from beneath the surface of the planet rather than built, suggesting the Chimera were active on Earth some time during the distant past. Within months of the Chimera's overrunning of Europe, dozens of towers were excavated across the continent, and it soon became clear that they were interconnected, forming a vast planetary network. In several cases, larger hub towers were identified and destroyed by local resistance groups, disrupting large sections of the network in the British Isles and Western Europe, and leaving the Chimera there scattered and leaderless. However, resistance is futile. Despite these setbacks, the Chimera were able to launch an enormous invasion of North America and further extend their network. Within the center of the Chicxulub crater on the Yucatan Peninsula, the largest tower of the network ever observed was uncovered, one that seemingly acted as the center of the entire global apparatus. Desperate to destroy this tower before the network could fulfill its ultimate purpose, the last remaining military forces of the United States detonated an atomic bomb aboard Daedalus's flagship, destroying much of the fleet stationed there, but also inadvertently triggering the network and opening a wormhole to the Chimera's home planet. With the Earth completely under their control, numerous terraforming devices were placed in orbit to slowly cool the planet and make it more suitable for Chimeran life. In a last-ditch attempt to save humanity, a terraformer located over the new center of the network, New York City, was critically disabled, causing it to crash into the tower below, closing the wormhole. Okay, so the planet was not teleported to the Chimeran home system. There was just a wormhole that's connecting Earth to the Chimeran home system. All right. Okay, all right. So... Yes, we have been defeated, but we still have a chance. <laughs> we still have a chance. And here they are, you know, destroying one of the ter terraforming uh, platforms and having it being sucked. Or is it crashing onto Earth? I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. But yeah, we have a chance. With the link to their planet severed, the terraforming process was halted and Earth's ecosystem began showing signs of recovery. The victory in New York proved to be the beginning of the end of the Chimera, and all across the world, resistance fighters began reclaiming the ruined cities of mankind. Wait, but I don't understand that part. Because the Chimera adapted themselves to, you know, Earth's climate. Especially when they had to spread themselves further down uh, into the Southern Hemisphere. They adapted, did they not? So, why would it all of a sudden now change because... Uh, the wormhole has been disconnected and the terraforming machines have been deactivated. Why has that situation now changed? Because the Chimera adapted themselves to uh, a, a warmer climate environment. So I don't understand, but okay. This terrible enemy remains as much a mystery as ever, and their defeat leaves behind only unanswered questions.
Perhaps the most lingering mystery is if the chimera have any true form, or exist only as hybrids born of other species. I think they're a weapon, really. I think whatever advanced civilization created the chimera, it's mainly a biological weapon that has, uh, you know, technological warfare suites built into its DNA as well, you know. So it's like a multifaceted private army that's been created by this advanced civilization. I don't think they are the true chimera. I think they're just uh, the worker bees, you know, just sent out across the universe, uh, you know, terraform, conquer, absorb uh, different species on different planets, and then, you know, activate the towers, create a wormholes going directly to the home planet, and then collect all the resources and, you know, give it to the home planet. Essentially, they're just colonizing. They're colonizers. And they're extracting the, the raw material from these planets uh, for the betterment of the empire, essentially. Whether the so-called pure chimera are still out there, waiting in the stars, is the subject of much debate. But the most haunting evidence for their existence can be found in the final words of the man responsible for their eventual defeat. Can you hear them? They are calling to us. It's beautiful. This is just the beginning. The Templin Institute investigates nations, organizations, and factions from alternate worlds and realities. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Do you have a suggestion for a future episode? Let us know by leaving a comment. Okay guys, that is it with the Chimera uh, Resistance made on the Templin Institute uh, YouTube channel. And yeah, we got to see the conclusion of uh, the Chimerian War uh, with humanity through the skin of its teeth surviving and winning this war, uh, obviously at a heavy cost. Um, I wonder how many humans are left after this final victory for humanity, you know. Um, but yeah, essentially the enemy was defeated when they disconnected or destroyed the terraforming machines as well as uh you know destroying the connection between the chimera and homeworld and earth um because you know after resistance 2 i thought earth teleported from where from where it was in its position in space and it just teleported directly uh in the chimera and home system but we've been told it was actually a wormhole connecting uh these two planets so yeah that wormhole has been destroyed the chimera on the planet uh somehow um yeah we weren't really explained how but somehow you know they've lost cohesion they've lost uh, any semblance of you know how they used to operate during resistance 2 and resistance 1 and uh, the humans have been able to push them back and even defeat them so that was quite a surprise or maybe because they don't have a a leadership mind uh, controlling them and you know pushing them forward like how Deadless uh, controlled the Chimera to do his bidding maybe they don't have someone like that to replace uh, Deadless and maybe that's why uh, they didn't have cohesion and humans could pick them off one by one uh, maybe that's how they got defeated because uh, I know for a fact that you know the Chimera adapted to our ecosystem to our environment uh, especially in the hot hotter areas so there's just no way they could be defeated because the, the terraforming machines have been destroyed and, you know, uh, the planet is getting warm again because they've adapted to that already. So, yeah, it's either a leadership crisis that led to the defeat of the Chimera or it's something else. Yeah, it's something else. Um, but yeah, this was interesting. This was really interesting. Uh, Neutral TK, thank you very much uh, for requesting that I should react to this video. Uh, now I finally understand <laughs> uh, what has happened. However, I think there should be more resistance games. You know, we need to understand the Chimera more. We need to know why are they doing all of this. Um, I've already given my, you know, hypothesis on this matter that maybe the Chimera, the true pure Chimera, you know, are creating these Chimera as their 
foot soldiers as weapons to be sent out across the universe, uh, do their bidding, collect the resources and return them back to the home system. You know, like, like uh, an empire that's colonizing the rest of the galaxy, if I can say that. So, yeah, that's what I'm thinking, that, you know, these things are just worker bees just doing as they're programmed and uh, essentially they're just here to uh, uh, get all the resources, uh, whether it's biological or it's uh, mineral uh, based and, you know, ship them off back to the home system. Um, but, yeah, we need to know more about the chimera uh, hopefully one day i don't know one day <laughs> uh, they can create another resistance game that centers around you know humanity rebuilding but also humanity you know coming into contact with other alien species that are fighting against the chimera you know and then they work together to fight against the uh the the, the original uh, pure chimera you know, somehow, some way. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm just thinking that maybe that should be a possibility. Um, but yeah, this was good. This was really, really good. Thank you, guys, uh, for you know watching my reaction to the res uh, Resistance game uh, videos on the Tempen Institute. And if you want to check out the original video as well as Tempen Institute's YouTube channel, the links are in the description below. If you like my reaction, please give me a like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Click on the notification bell if you want to be up to date with my latest videos. And I'll see you guys next time. Okay? Good night.